to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to this Nigerian event. Tonight, we are going to have great fun. We are going to tell you the history of our great country. No matter what you hear about my great country, Nigeria, take it with a pinch of salt, because Nigeria is a beautiful country. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce those who are going to be the um, hosts for tonight. Wonderful couple, and I'm going to join them together as a notary public in the state of Florida. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome the first anchor for tonight. Her name is Caleb Thompson. Caleb Thompson is a Jamaican-American entrepreneur and a media personality. She is the executive producer of national television show, Taste the Islands. Publisher, ladies and gentlemen, of Island Origins magazine. And permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to show you that magazine tonight. She is an original Islander. Ladies and gentlemen, Caleb Thompson is the host, the executive producer of national television show Taste the Islands, publisher of Island Origins magazine, host and producer of Island Origins TV show. She's actually Miss Island. Ladies and gentlemen, she is a co-producer of the annual Taste the Islands Experience Culinary Festival and an adopted daughter of the Nigerian community. She's now called Yetunde by Dr. Yinkatela and a Nigerian friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the island lady. Let us welcome Kali Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm a typical Nigerian man. All that that she's turning around, we don't understand it. Give me uh, uh, Davido, I will dance. You're welcome, Miss Island, Caleb Thompson. God bless you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she's Christian. Yeah, today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving ahead. I do not want to waste your time, ladies and gentlemen, because tonight is going to be special. We have a Jamaican, an Islander in the house. And I know the wife of my uh, Miami Gardens representative is equally from the island. That's talking about the wife of Dr. Erabo Igodaro. All right, the islanders, get ready. If you are Jamaican in the building, just raise up your hand. All right, respect one in the name of the Most High, Jawadada. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next person I'm going to introduce is a community leader and a man who is strategically positioned to help the Nigerian people and other Africans here in South Florida. Desmond Yu Alufoi is a senior international trade coordinator and head of the international trade program for Miami Dade County, uh, for Miami Dade County's Economic Development and International Trade Agency. Mr. Alufoy has worked as a leader in the international community for more than 25 years. Ladies and gentlemen, he made notable contributions during his tenure as JCI as a liaison to the following organizations. United Nations Agencies, UNICEF and UNESCO, World Health Organization, WHO, and the African Union, AU. He was a delegate to the international model United Nations, IMUN, in New York in 1991. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alufai is an accomplished entrepreneur. He is a founder and owner of Alufai International Incorporated, a management consulting and professional meeting planning company based in South Florida, United States of America. 
and owner of Tabitha's Bistro, a restaurant in Derby, Florida. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lufwa is an inductee, 5,000 role models of excellence projects January 2018. He is a member of the North American Small Business International Trade Educators, Certified Global Business Professionals Governance Council. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alufoy is, a board, is on the board of directors for World Trade Center, Miami. Security and Safety Committee, Florida Customs Brokers and Forwarders Association. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman is equally the founding president University of Benin, Alumni Association of North America, Urbana, Florida chapter. I belong to that chapter as an alumni of the greatest university in Nigeria, Great Unibet. Mr. Alufuai is a recipient of the following awards and accolades. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a recipient of South Florida's 50 most powerful and influential black professionals in business and industry. Recipient of the prestigious Nigerian American Foundation Heritage Award 2011. Featured in the inaugural edition of West Woo in South Florida 2007. Miami Dade Black Heritage Community Pillars Award 2004. Miami Dade County Converted Cultural Ambassador Award 2003. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Desmond Alufoy was voted. 10 most outstanding young persons of Nigeria, 1998. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alifua is only referred to as Mr. International by his peers and associates because of his extensive international travels and proficiency in international affairs, protocol, and diplomacy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish at this point to introduce to all of you the host for tonight. The co-host for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Mr. International Desmond Alufwa. To my Nigerian brothers and sisters, Kedikodu, Jambo, Asante Sana, and Salam Aleikum. It is a great pleasure to co host as your MC tonight. Nigeria Kwanu! I want to sleep. Naf Kwanu! Chifabade Kwanu! Alahaji Kwenu, Dr. Godaro Kwenu, Nigeria Kwenu, Kwenu Enu. Nigeria Niti Bungu Wani, Koma Bodo Baje, Tumiku Sifu Mironti Adino, Hajo Ole Davile, Eje Kaswo Woko Kapi Moshokan, Wege Nima. You're making me 
shouldn't feel like an old lady up here. That's what, come on, too much energy. All right, only the man known as Mr. International can welcome our guests in so many different languages. Distinguished guests, on behalf of the Nigerian American Foundation, we want to express our deep gratitude and appreciation to all of you for joining us tonight to celebrate Nigeria's 58th independence anniversary. Please give Nigeria a round of applause. Over five decades ago, the founders had a dream, a big, audacious dream. Ordinary men and women, farmers, teachers, doctors, lawyers, students, craftsmen, everyone came together and demanded liberty, justice, and freedom for their own land. As a British colony, this is some history now, as a British colony, Nigeria became a federation in 1954, and increasing degrees of internal self-governance were introduced by the British until the country became fully independent on October 1st, 1960. Dr. Nambi Azikiwe was installed as Governor General of the Federation and Tafawa Balewe, Balewa sorry, served as Prime Minister and head of the democratically elected parliament. Well, Yetunde, do you know how Nigeria got its name? I know all of that stuff, but I do not know. Please tell me and everybody else who's not from Nigeria. Well, I'll tell you and our guest. In 1890, a British reporter named Flora Shaw suggested that the country be named Nigeria after River Niger that flows through it. The Niger River originates in Guinea and it flows through Mali, Republic of Niger, entering into Nigeria at the tip of Kirby State. It bifurcates Kogi State, Kogi State into Benue River and continues southwest into Niger Delta. That was how Nigeria got its name, that, rivers. That sounds like a lot of rivers, so Nigerians must know how to swim then, right? And a lot of fish too, that's why we love fish. Nigerians have a, sorry, Jamaicans have a lot of water, we don't all know how to swim. Um, Nigeria, another fun fact here, Nigeria is the most populous black nation on earth. Nigeria's population was 46 million at independence in 1960. According to the United Nations, Nigeria's population right now is estimated to be 180 million, making it the seventh most populous nation in the world, and Africa's largest country by population. According to the United Nations, the population could double by 2035. Nigeria has 36 states and a federal capital territory located in Abuja. The current head of state is retired Army General, I need to pronounce this correctly, Muhammadu Buhari. Did you know, I say it right? You and I have been practicing and working on this for all of five minutes. <laughs> so, so you are doing a fantastic job. Thank you so very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I crave your indulgence as we rise for the national anthem of Nigeria, followed by the anthem of the United States.
Brown. John E., one of the best in Florida saxophone. And be before you introduce our first speaker, I just have to say, when you all stood up a while ago, the room looked so, you're not seeing it from where you are, but the room is beautiful. Please give yourselves a round of applause. You look amazing. Thank you. Beautiful and shining. I see my sister, they were lowering for me, just radiating the elegance of Nigeria. Now, we're so glad you all arrived here safely, and we want to make sure that we thank God for bringing us here safe and sound. I am always so pleased and honored to introduce somebody who actually doesn't need any introduction. He's my friend, he's my brother, homeboy, and we call him son of the soil. But he is a pioneer and a trailblazer one of the most influential persons in South Florida, a rising star, the first Nigerian American or an African had that to be elected into any city council in South Florida. Please welcome the city of Miami's vice mayor, the honorable Doctor Irabo Rigodaro. If I may summon the language of our past presidents of these great organizations, I say thank you in the words of Mr. Bola Ayodele, the first president of the Nigerian American Foundation, from the words of the Yoruba people. Oshé Baba Eshé Gon. If I summon you in the words of our brothers and sisters from Igbo land, Brother Izunobi, past president of the Nigerian American Foundation, we say Baba Dalu, thank you for summoning you in the words of the people from Edo Kingdom. And President Andrew Salazar, we say, say, no room in a Pawakbe who salubo. We thank you. We thank you in the words of our former chair from the northern part of Nigeria, Mohammed Farouk, and say, Nagwa de Yala. We salute you in the best way we know how. We call on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. If we have 10,000 pounds, we can thank you enough for your affairs in our lives. We thank you for this great organization, the Nigerian American Foundation. We thank you for the leadership of our president, current president, Dr. Yinka Teller, Chola Teller, the dynamic duo that you've allowed to lead this organization. We thank and bless your name. We call on you from the riverine areas of the Benin city to the rivers flowing through the river Benue. We 
call on you for the mountain hills of Abel Kuta, to the plains of Jos Plateau. We call on you, O oh God, from the commercial cities of Onicha, Abia, to the capital city of Abuja. We call on you, O oh God, from the continent of Africa to the diaspora that spreads around the globe. We salute you in the name of Toussaint Louverture from Haiti. We salute you in the name of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey from Jamaica, who reminded us that we are one people, one God, one name, and one destiny. We summon you and call on you from the words of Padre Jose Marti from Cuba, who reminds us that we must educate children in order not to punish adults. We thank you, Lord, for it is in your name we have prayed. We thank you that this event is going to be successful and is indeed successful. We pray for the food that we're going to consume, that it be a nourishment to our minds, body, and spirit. And we eat and acknowledge those that don't have to eat. Now, as we close, O oh Lord, we thank you for 58 years of independence for that great country of Nigeria. Nigeria is indeed great. In the parlance of our young people, Nigerians, Nigeria know the carry last. We are a great people. All across the diaspora, we lead in the medical field, in science, in astronomy, we lead in mathematics, we, we lead in medicine, in business. Whatever we touch, we succeed because we are a special people. We are a peculiar nation, a chosen generation, and a royal priesthood. We are great people. There's no shame in our game that we come from you, oh God. You're the one that made us in your own image and likeness. We salute you now in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. He said, let freedom reign. Let freedom reign like waters from a mighty stream and righteousness flow down Freedom reign in Nigeria. We are independent. We're not going to be dependent on nobody. No force, no powers, whether physical or spiritual, will be able to subdue and subjugate that country and the continent of Africa. We thank you, O Lord, for freedom has reigned in that country, Nigeria, and we will never be enslaved again, for whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. It is in your name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Vice Mayor Irabo Egodaro, Dr. I, as they call him in the city of Miramar Gardens, who, by the way, set the record in the city of Miami Gardens to have received the most votes ever for an elected official in the city of Miami Gardens. Rumor has it. Dr. I, are there rumors of mayorship? Should we start a campaign? In two years, okay. In every African gathering, we do libation. Libation is simply the process of invoking the presence of our ancestors to come and guide and bless us. It gives me great pleasure to bring on stage 
one of our leaders and an icon in the African community, entitled Chief. Please welcome Chief Victor Vela Akouba Opara. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, libation is not worshiping of idols, as some of you may be thinking. Libation has been from it from long time, and I will tell you if you have your cell phone with you there, you can Google libation. Libation was done in the Bible. If you turn to Genesis chapter 35, verses 14 and 15, is the first place where Jacob spoke with God. And after speaking with God, he poured an expensive oil at the place. And that place is called Bethel. So libation is simply invoking the spirits of our ancestors to partake in what we are doing tonight. If you look the hip hop culture, when the guys get together, they get their liquor and pour a little bit on the ground and say to the homies that are not here with us tonight. So what we are doing is just invoking the spirits of our ancestors to partake in what we are doing this evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, well, we are invoking our forefathers. We don't we speak the language we don't understand. I speak Igbo and I will do it in Igbo. The Chineke, Chinekonya, Chinekonya, and my Bosina and Mugabo, Nani Mugabo. Uh, one of our great ancestors, uh, the Obad of Bini always said that I will always pray in the language of my ancestors until it is proven to me that God doesn't understand. And we all know God is God of understanding. So indulge me by saying this in Yoruba language. 
to ilo gere afoko ye ri alapo te ka ko tu ko ba fun gbogbo wa o ko ri ile ko ma ba to de je o thank you
Thank you, thank you, Charles. Thank you. Wow. Drums can talk in Africa. They can talk in the U.S. too. Drums can talk. I thought we use cell phones in the U.S. We're we are at the meeting of the location. Oh, yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Kalibi, what is the population of Jamaica? I think, if I am correct, don't quote me on this, I believe it's somewhere around 2.6 million. We're nowhere near your hundreds of millions of... Yeah. That's like one village in... Uh, that's <laughs> in Nigeria. Do you know something? <laughs> Do you know something? I know that in my family bloodline, there is Igbo, there is Yoruba, and there is uh, Ashanti. Ashanti, Ghana? Okay, all righty. Talking about Ashanti, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we want to recognize our friends and brothers and elected officials and associations that have come here to celebrate Nigeria's 56, 58 independence with us. I see our brothers from the Gambia, the Gambia Association of Florida. Brother Mike, please rise up to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Gambia. Young Gadev, our brothers and sisters for Ghana that have consistently supported us all through the years. And uh, I know today is your meeting day, and yet the president and the immediate past president led a delegation, they bought a table. We are so, so grateful for your support. Please help us welcome the United Ghana Association of South Florida, led by their president, Madam Sarah. Madam President, please. Madam President, I promised Dr. Abaka and uh, Sandra that I'm not going to argue about jollof rice today. The difference between Ghanaians and Nigerians, that's the story. We've already recognized our brother, but it gives me great pleasure once again to please help me recognize the Vice Mayor of the City of Miami Gardens, the one the only, the next, starts with M of the city of Miami Gardens, Dr. Irabe Nicolero! Of all the 
associations, please rise up to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I have to tell you, uh, if there's one Nigerian that you absolutely have to get to know sooner or later, is Mr. Don Campion. Mr. Don Campion is one of those rare white Nigerians who was born in Nigeria, left Nigeria, and he's now running the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. And he took it upon himself to go back to build. His parents took him there when they were missionaries. He went back to Nigeria to build a hospital and he's doing fantastic job shipping medical supplies, doctors, to help the country of Nigeria. Please help us recognize and thank Chief. He's actually a chief now. Chief Don Campion and his wife, Mrs. Campion. Nigeria, we just call him Oyibo. Thank you, my brother Tabi, for letting me know that uh, I recognize Vice Mayor, but protocol demands that uh, Mr. and Mrs. So please help me welcome my sister. Um, you know, Shannon and I, we've gone back a long time, you know, when she was pregnant with the twins, and uh, I, I have to tell you, you know, she is in her own right, an icon, and uh, please help me welcome and thank uh, for the wonderful support to our brother, Mrs. Shana Godari. <laughs> sponsored us, so let me also present, uh, representing the office of the Honorable Barbara Jordan, our own sister, Olori Fumi Giwamu, office of Commissioner Barbara Jordan. Thank you. Dixon, who are you representing tonight? Because you have to represent something. Ibu, Ibu, all Ibu Association or just there. Uh, okay. Chief Dixon Eziala and Dr. Eziala, welcome. All the African chiefs in the house, please stand up to be recognized. All the purveyors of African customs and tradition, all African chiefs. Please stand up to be recognized if you are an African chief. A round of applause for our chiefs, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now want to bring forward Dr. Yinka Teller, the man who has been working hard every day on behalf of the Nigerian diaspora here in South Florida. Since becoming the flag bearer and spokesperson for the Nigerian community in South Florida, he and his team have worked hard and they continue to work hard tirelessly to improve and project the best positive image for the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Nigerian diaspora. He has embarked on a tireless and personal crusade to brand Nigeria, conducting outreach efforts in Florida and beyond. The results of his efforts are already
bearing tangible fruit. He led numerous missions back to Nigeria. He represented us at the Congressional Black Caucus in, in conference in Washington. He led trips to Tallahassee to advocate on behalf of the Nigerian community and, to, and he worked with State Representative Daphne Campbell to secure grants for African projects. He also worked with Congresswoman Frederica Wilson on the campaign to bring back our girls after more than 200 Chibo girls were kidnapped by Boko Haram terrorist group. He brought the first open Nigerian exhibition to Miami-Dade County Center and he continues to partner with numerous agencies and organizations to showcase the Nigerian culture, intellect, and potential. This is really sweet and bitter, bitter and sweet because this will be his last speech as the president of NAM. Please welcome, he's my neighbor, we both live in Pembroke Point. He's my brother, he's my age mate, he's a leader. Please welcome NAM's president, the one and only, all the way from Pembroke Point. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, President, particular remarks, there is pride in unity and service. Distinguished honorees, special guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to welcome you to this green and white gala celebrating Nigeria's 58th independence anniversary. I am particularly delighted that we are appreciating the ethos of community service at this year's banquet, which also happens to be my last as the, pre as the president of this great and progressive association. 
I'm particularly delighted that we are approaching, um, it all started four years ago when I was asked to head the Nigerian American Foundation in succession to the illustrious Dr. Erabo Igodaro, uh, who is here present today, and uh, who is now the deputy mayor of the great city of Miami Gardens and who had been the face of the association for many years. Dr. Igodaro had toiled with others like Chief Joseph Obadehi, the chairman of our association, and Dr. Patrick Ojo to stabilize the association. But, was still, but there were still, like in all areas of human endeavor, quite a few glaring challenges. I saw my unanimous election into the presidency as a call to service, and we confronted those challenges head long. There was the challenge of scanty paid membership. There was the challenge of our community's fragmentation into disparate organizations pursuing often divergent objectives with little or no recognizable areas of convergence. There was the challenge of organizational introspection and strategic visioning, capacity building, membership buying and involvement, the conception, execution, and fair tuning of associations' policies and programs. To make any sort of progress whatsoever, we knew we had to instill a sense of efficacy in the organization and its membership. So, we decided to directly organize the annual Independence Gala, which we rebranded as the Green and White Gala four years ago. To accomplish that task with little or no resources, we struck a partnership with Florida International Universities Africa an African Diaspora Studies program, came up with a lean and mean budget, and attracted new partners interested in the freshness and vigor of our vision for a new self-reliant and volunteer-driven association. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to report tonight that the success of that project was both symbolic and substantive. I believe in ourselves, prepared, prepared us to even more achievements, some of which I am proud to enumerate here. Reconstruction of the NAP website, NigerianAmericanFoundation.com, partnership with Marmalade Candy to showcase Nigerian arts and artifacts in the lobby of the government center every October since 2016. Annual declaration and recognition of Nigerian American Day at the Florida Capitol since 2016. Annual retreat of the Nigerian American Foundation, hosted free of charge by Banyan here, represented here by Oluwe Don Campion, the actual of Ebe, since 2015. Introduction of NAV Roundtable to share information and resources on issues germane to the political and economic empowerment of Nigerians in South Florida. That was introduced in 2014. Standardization, standardization of our accounting system to promote more transparency and accountability and making it possible for us to attract a couple of modest grants and putting our association's finances in the solid green column. Linking up with like-minded associations such as the Diaspora Arts Coalition, the Circle of Brotherhood, Florida Asian Services, Ghana, Asian American uh, Nurses Association, and Asian American Nurses Association, while strengthening a long-standing partnership with the United Ghanaian Association of South Florida to invigorate the service concept as a racial deter of our organization. Conception of the Youth of Promise Scholarship Program, which is being consummated today with awards to three deserving recipients in our community. 
re-engineering of this very big competition, which found a new home at Miami Dade Garden, Nottingham Post, with the unwavering support of its indefatigable president, Dr. Malu Ariza. Introduction of the annual Cultural and Awareness Festival in, part, in partnership with the great city of Miami Gardens, Miami Dade County, and our various ethnic associations. Betty of Afri Fest Miami, which was held during Black History Month this February, to bring all people of African descent together to network while having fun and celebrating their rich culture. Circle of Brotherhood is our partner in this project with Mrs. Charlotte Watkins as our pioneer committee chair. Amendment of our constitution to admit organizational members, including New Nigeria Alliance, Aqua Ibom State Association, Ibo State Association, Edo State Association, Ijebu Descendants of South Florida, and Ebe Omojidua. The leaders of these associations Many of whom are here in this room tonight constitute NAB's Board of Advisors on Cultural and Community Affairs, Baker. The president, the current president of Baker, is the illustrious Mr. Scotty Izebege. I believe he's in, the, in this room. Mr. Izebege, can you just rise to be recognized? Thank you. Implementation in collaboration with North Miami Beach Medical Center, slash Mercy Mobile Training of free medical services for uninsured members and associate members who satisfy federal poverty guidelines. Success, we successfully negotiated discounted rates for life insurance with medical evacuation and repatriation benefits for our interested members and associated, associate members. The idea behind this is to stop the frequent you know, practice of going around camping and asking for donations each time a member of our community dies. We successfully, we instituted prepaid legal services for interested members and associate members through legal shield. We secured grants in excess of $600,000 for the African Museum of Arts and Culture through the instrumentality of honorary Nigerian, I don't think she's here right now, State Advanced State Senator Daphne Adaise Campbell. Invited, we were invited to the Congressional Black Caucus Annual Convention by Congresswoman Chief, when we say Chief, a Nigerian Chief, I mean, Frederick Awis. Honored by Miami Dade Board, County of County, uh, Board of County Commissioners, recognized by Florida Department of Health, honored by Florida State Senate recognized by the Florida State House of Representatives, and we have organized so far two passport intervention exercises in 2015 and 2017. A third one is now scheduled for October 18 to 21, a few weeks before I step down from office as your president. So I'll be going down strong. Like Nigerian American Foundation, the organizations we are honoring today who are formed by ordinary people who believe in a cause and willingly invested their sweat, time, and treasures to translate their collective vision to reality. President Obama, the President Obama, once noted that he got his best education working with people at the grassroots because it taught him that ordinary people, when they are working together, can do extraordinary things. Indeed, the organizations we are honoring today have accomplished extraordinary things by announcing the positive energy and drive of their patrons. We congratulate all of you and urge you to soldier on as there is still, still much work to be done. Let's remember Mother Teresa's words, channeled by one of our scholarship recipients today, and I was proud that she even knew who Mother Teresa was. Let us touch the dying, the poor, the lonely, and the unwanted, according to the graces we have received. And let us not be ashamed or slow to do the humble work. As I indicated when I addressed the Florida State House Minority Caucus, 
Africa is the home of all people of black descent. And one out of every four black Africans is Nigeria. We should operate together in unity. As Nigerians, we have a vested interest in an American society that treats blacks with dignity and respect. A society that allows smart, law-abiding people to thrive. We believe in the essential character of the United States as a nation of immigrants, an exceptional country where people are enabled to dream and achieve their utmost regardless of accidents of birth or geography. America is a kaleidoscope of colors where different cultures and perspectives flourish for the good of humanity. Please, let's all work together to preserve this America that we have all grown to love and cherish. This is not the time to allow political demagoguery or phobia of difference to turn us into frightened chickens afraid of our own shadows all these manufacturing escape goods for whatever our deficiencies are. I cannot end this address without recognizing the stellar work of all members and leaders of the Nigerian American Foundation, and most certainly the sacrifice that my wife Shola and my children, Fadekemi and Koladi, have made in the last four years for us to be able to make a success of this adventure. I also thank the Wise, very wise, he's a very wise man. NAF chairman, Chief Joseph Obade, the Loki Abachoye, like my one of my friends likes to, you know, errand every time. The chairs of our organizing committees, Dr. Ibanga Ipe, Ipe, Spelling Bee, we had the Spelling Bee this morning. Chief Victor Para, Cultural Festival, Dr. Aiden Ransera, Ed Fear, Dr. Ketrin Intekin, who puts the team together for this gala, Ms. Kofu Lossi, who is going to be in charge of our passport intervention exercise in the next two weeks, Dr. Patti Kojo, who was in charge of marketing and promotions, of course, Ms. Winnie Time, who actually needs to become an honorary, honorary Nigerian too, for a job well done in helping to put this souvenir journal together. Thank you all for listening. Have a great evening. Thank you. Doctor Yikatera. For that inspirational message and of course for giving me my African name Yetude. In fact, Dr. Teller's leadership and hard work and dedication and focus has not gone unnoticed. He is in fact the recipient of numerous awards and accolades. Nigerian Americans are part of the mosaic of Im immigrants that enriches the multicultural diversity of the United States. Nigerians are the single largest contemporary African, Im African immigrant group in the United States. It is estimated that more than 20 million Nigerians reside outside of that country, while the biggest population lives in the United Kingdom and the United States. Additionally, the Nigerian diaspora has established itself in every sphere of life in the world, and especially here in the U.S. As a matter of fact, please make sure you look into your handbook. There are some very nice facts about Nigeria in that uh, book. Yes. Um, and I notice you've all been shouting out your tribes and so forth. We tried that with Jamaica a little bit earlier in the evening and there was one person in the back. I see a whole lot more Jamaicans here now. So can I please hear from my Jamaica tribe? <laughs> Special thanks to Commissioner Audrey M. Edmondson, 
These are our sponsors for the evening. Our major sponsors, Commissioner Audrey Edmondson Banyan Air Services, thank you to them. Broward College South Campus, City of Miami Gardens, Trend Home Health Services, Miami-Dade College North Campus, thank you to all of them and to everyone who has inserted uh, ads or congratulations or thank yous into your program. There's a lot of great information in here. And everyone who has inserted an ad into this program, we want to thank you very much. Without you this evening would not have been possible. Ms. Calibia, I hear that we have a surprise show that wasn't announced and it's not in the program. So, I'm excited about this because if you picked up the magazine that, uh, that our friend showed you this evening, you see that it's very fashion focused this time around, Island Origins Magazine. Well, I heard that there is a group called N.I. Swim that's going to join us for a fashion show. Are you excited? Let's see. Are are you they? It, it's hot in here. It's about to get hotter with the ladies of N.I. Swim. DJ, music. <laughs> Yellow crop top. See, when you have 
the when you have the potential wardrobe malfunction, you have to layer. So we have we have the beautiful painted bra top underneath, and then we have the crop top with the long sleeves in yellow and the gold studs over the top. You pair it with the beautiful headpiece, and you have something really beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. And I swim. All right, so we're going back to another two-piece, hand-painted on the top once again. Yellow at top and bottom. The bikini bottom, I believe, is yellow underneath. And we've repurposed the throw-over that we saw the first time in the show. So we have the yellow and white throw-over wrapped over this beautiful yellow two-piece bikini.
and I know that there are a lot of Nigerian cuisines yes. for people to try. I am excited as the producer of a food show that it's very multicultural. I am excited to try some of the things I saw today. Now, Mr. International, did you know that the late, great Anthony Bourdain, host of CNN's Parts Unknown, visited Nigeria just before his untimely death? I saw that video you from CNN, yes. yes. Uh, he had this to say about Nigerian cuisine. He said, the Nigerian pepper soup, specifically, and I know a little bit about that because I am Jamaican, right? The Nigerian pepper soup is amazing. Of everything he had, he said, it was particularly spicy and delicious. Awesome. Please enjoy the delicious variety of Nigerian cuisine we are going to enjoy this evening as we present, ladies and gentlemen, the Battle of the Saxes. During dinner by IOE and Kettler McCone. Thank you. We will join you shortly. Enjoy your dinner. We ask your sister. She don't know me. Oh, 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 she don't
invite somebody from the Ghanaian community, my friend and immediate past president, Dr. Edmond Abaka. We all know that uh, a big Iroko tree fell in Africa very recently. The passing of Africa's illustrious son, the past Secretary General of the United Nations. Even though the Honorable Kofi Annan is a Ghanaian, he made Africa very proud. Please come forward, Dr. Abaka, to give us some uh, information. Thank you very much. I bring you greetings from the United Ghanaians Association of South Florida. And we congratulate the Nigerian American Foundation on this 58th anniversary of Nigeria's independence. We also salute all the friends or chairpersons of the other African organizations that are represented here. It is said that in the midst of life, there is death. And in the midst of death, there is life. And so while we celebrate, with our Nigerian friends. We also want to take this opportunity to remind ourselves and to invite ourselves to a memorial on the 13th of October, next Saturday, at the answer for Lauderdale, 1350 East Sunrise Boulevard, answer for Lauderdale, 1350 East Sunrise Boulevard. It's a memorial, 
a tribute to honor one of Africa's illustrious sons, Mr. Kofi Annan, the immediate past Secretary General of the United Nations. Mr. Kofi Annan, <coughs> excuse me, did all of us proud, did Africa proud. He was the epitome of stability, he was the epitome of peace and tranquility. And any time I heard the phrase, no drama Obama, I said to myself, that personifies Mr. Kofi Annan. He was somebody who rose through the ranks of the United Nations to the very pinnacle of the organization and there performed an onerous responsibility, performed creditably, performed magnificently on behalf of all of us, on behalf of Africa. And so next Saturday we're going to honor him and we are inviting all of you once again, 1350 East Sunrise Boulevard, at Sir Fort Lauderdale. The time is 8 p.m. to 9.30, 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And if you need more information, the phone number is 561-574-0913. 561-574-0913. Let us come together to celebrate a life that comes once in a lifetime. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Abaka. Please, before you leave, go to the Ghanaian table to get more information. Dr. Abaka, please give the information to our president, Dr. Teller, so that he can disseminate the information. Nigerians, Haitians, please help us join our Ghanaian brothers and sisters to honor the late Kofi Annan next week, Saturday. They postponed their Ghanaian meeting, which should be today, to join us to come and celebrate our independence. I think we should reciprocate next weekend by also going to support them the way they have come to support us. Thank you. Uh, now, the speaker who is coming up, Dr. Joan Muir, uh, a Jamaican sister of mine, uh, we met not too long ago when she came on to our Facebook live series that we were doing and had a conversation with us and our viewers about mental and psychological health. And I'm not going to read her whole bio to you, but I can tell you at the end of that conversation that we did on camera, she had people calling her to get, you know, get, get more expertise from her uh, on her field of knowledge. So. Uh, we want to welcome, it is my great pleasure to invite tonight's keynote speaker for her address. Please welcome, put your hands together for, Dr. Joan Muir of the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Her full bio is inside of the program. You can read up all about her. But thank you, Dr. Muir. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here. I know the hour is late, and I know that you've just eaten. And, uh, you know, in Jamaica, they have a an expression for when people have had a heavy meal and get sleepy. Ah, someone said it. So I hope you don't have that. I'm going to keep my remarks brief, uh, but this is an important event and I was asked to speak on the pride of the diaspora, which is the theme. I am Jamaican born. I am also a United States citizen. It's kind of hard this evening. We've had some very difficult challenges in our republic. Those of you who got dressed early today and you didn't know that uh, we now have a Supreme Court justice, a new one, who many of us had a lot of feelings about. I want to talk about what it means to be African 
and what it means to be African in the diaspora. I want to acknowledge my dear friend, uh, Dr. Yin Katella and his wife, Shola. I also want to acknowledge my Ghanaian brothers and sisters um, who are here. I personally know that I'm Ghanaian by origin, but that doesn't mean I don't love the Nigerians. So in this time of our lives, the African diaspora is spread all over the world. From the continent, like many of you are here tonight, but spread across the Caribbean and Latin America. We all know that we did not get here, those of us like myself, Jamaican born, we did not get here by choice. We were forced into slavery and that is how we got here. And then there are others of you, born in Nigeria, born in Ghana, you came because you had a goal for your life. You came to the United States, you had something that you were looking for. And it's so important for us to get together. I'm very proud of a number of Jamaicans that I see in the audience. It seems like Jamaicans pop up everywhere, but it, <laughs> but it means we're looking for something. We're looking to connect with our African brothers and sisters. So those of us who came hundreds of years ago, our families came hundreds of years ago by force. Those of you who came because you chose to come here and you were lucky, you got a visa. Regardless of how you got here, we need to stick together. One of the first things I was told my family arrived in New York, and on my first job, the first thing I was told was, oh, you're Jamaican. Oh, you're better than them. And I go, better than who? Well, you're better than the black Americans. So the first thing I want to say is, we have to resist a tried and true method that separates us. It's called divide and conquer. You can tell that the person who spoke to me was American. I refuse to accept that. I refuse to be separate from anybody of African descent. You are my brother. Whether the, shape, whether the slave ship landed in North Carolina or whether it landed in Montego Bay, Jamaica, it doesn't matter. You are my brother and you are my sister and we are no different. But we have to be responsible because if we are not resisting that message, then we are giving an opportunity for others to take away our power. Because our power is in staying united. So we have to resist these so-called superficial differences. Like I said, there's no difference in whether the slave ship landed in North Carolina or in Kingston, Jamaica, or in El Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we have the same root and we originate from Mother Africa. That's all that matters. And until we fully get to that place, we have not realized our true power. So I will resist anyone who tries to separate me from anybody else. I'm also not separate from any other ethnic group either, because we're all God's children. I'm not separate from my brothers from Asia. I'm not separate from my sisters from Ireland. We, we are, are not, not separate, separate people. And, and it, it is, is that, that separateness that hurts us and harms us. us. So, so I, I want to encourage us to really embrace the diaspora. diaspora. So why are we here? I have a challenge to my brothers and sisters who were, had the privilege of being born on the continent of Africa in the 19th or 20th century or the 21st century. There may be people here born in the 19th century, I don't know. I'm blessed my mother just turned 90 years old this, uh, this summer, and she was born in 1928. There may be people still alive who were born in the 19th century. 
But because you have the privilege of having been born on the continent, here's what you have to offer us. We do not know our history and our culture. And many other groups do. And that is the source of their power. When you know who you are, it's hard for people to tell you who you are not. And so I am grateful for this opportunity. I personally went on a journey that has allowed me to travel to five continents, to five countries on the continent of Africa. But there are lots of people of African descent who have no interest. They have absolutely no interest. Didn't even occur to them. Why? because they're being sold a message that the only thing on the continent to be seen is poverty or war. That's not true. We, have, we are from the oldest people on the planet Earth. Every person, every human being on this planet Earth originated on the continent of Africa. So there are things for us to learn. Some of you, I'm sure, have visited the National Museum of African American History and Culture, which opened in 2016. And everyone who's gone, I've been six times now, it's an amazing experience. It's the only place where I have seen 300 years of my history on display. And it is an amazing experience to have that. If you haven't been, make your way to Washington, D.C to the National Museum of African American History and Culture because the story begins in West Africa. And that's the beautiful thing. When you walk into that museum, you see the greatness of the civilization, you see what the Europeans saw, these societies that were sophisticated and well-developed. They met kings and queens. That is the story and that's how it begins at the museum. It's a shame that we have to go to a museum. It's a shame that the most educated ones among us don't know that history. Because what we've been taught, regardless of where we've come from, is somebody else's history. Or, or history, history did not, not begin in slavery for those of us, us who are in the diaspora. Or history began on the continent. So how can we strengthen our relationship? One of the most profound truths I've recognized is every, every ancient culture, it's only the modern cultures, every ancient culture is group oriented or collective. It's all about the group. It takes a village. It's not a term developed by Hillary Clinton. It's an African proverb. It's not just us. You ask our Asian brothers, you go to Latin America, you go to the, the ancient empires of the Incas and the Mayans. Everyone is group oriented. But we have become in this modern society where it is about us. Me. Me and my family. Whoever is under my roof. Not the community. I am so proud to be here, to be part of an organization I heard a long list of accomplishments of the Nigerian American Foundation, and it is about building community. And that's where it should be. We cannot do everything. And I'm not suggesting you overwork yourself. Your first responsibility is to your family. Your first responsibility is to secure your home. But let's take some time to work with each other. Let's take some time to build a community. And most of all, let's take time to help the most vulnerable. Today I can say, yes, I was born on the island of Jamaica. I have not done my DNA test, but I am absolutely certain I came from Ghana. And you know, my dear friends are here. Two of my closest friends are sitting in the audience, Hawa Seydou and her sister Mary. I'm not saying this to make people feel good. I actually told my family this when I was eight years old and they looked at me like I came from crazy town. Like, where did it come from? But when I got to Accra, I was like, I knew it. This is where I'm from. But the reality of it is, 
more than anything else, I'm proud to be African. I'm proud to be African. I am proud to be African. And I want to do whatever it is in my power to promote us working together and focusing on our strengths and not our weaknesses. I have no time for that because we are an amazing group of people that have survived so much. And this is our greatness. So to my African brothers and sisters who were born on the continent, help me to understand myself. Tell me your history. Tell me your culture. It frustrates me that I can't speak the language because I didn't grow up with it. Help me to understand myself because only in understanding ourselves can we truly, truly develop our God-given purpose. And so that's your gift. And that's why I am so grateful that you are my friends and you are my neighbors. You have something that was lost somewhere along the Atlantic, all along in those slave, slave ships, and you can help us to find it. So I am grateful to be here, and I am continuing to encourage you, let's work together. We truly are great people. Thank you. Hey, 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 doctor, you know, you just challenged. First and foremost, you cannot be Ghanaian. <laughs> One in four. It's okay, I'm part Nigerian. No, 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 no. I'm part Yoruba. No, 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 you are not even Yoruba, and I'll prove it right now. Just wait. One, mathematically, one in four Africans is a Nigerian. So the fact that you travel to Accra and you just saw people who look like you and you are claiming Ghana, it doesn't work. You actually have to do your DNA test so we know. But I like the challenge that you gave to us. So I'm going to call my president from, have you heard about the Benin Empire, the Benin Kingdom? My president is here, Mr. Scotty Zevige, please come forward. She challenged us tonight that she wants to learn more about our culture. So let us make her a Benin daughter tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd like to call on the oldest Benin man here to please join me. Uh, Uncle Philip of Yasoge, please join me, sir. which means our Oba is the owner of the land all the way from Nigeria to the end of the world. Oba na talk me. He said, that's why Chief Obade in the Yoruba man came to look for a Benin wife. That is true. Okay, so, Epa. Thank you. 
Thank you. You gonna say that way, you gonna say that way. Okay, thank you. What you just witnessed uh, is a tradition in Benin, and I was telling. Uh, Dr. Malou, that she has to take a Bini name tonight. We don't just give her the Kora base, but she has to take a Bini name. And she said that what she is just experienced, she is satisfied with what we just did, and so she took the name of Isoken. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It's official. She's not a Ghanaian, she's a Nigerian. Dr. Abakano Mexico, no Madam Sandra, Madam Sandra, how do you think we became 180 million people? We go to West Africa and we steal them into Nigeria. Dr. Jones, that's how they got me too. They just said, hey, you're yeah, too late. Come on. Nigerians are often. Nigerians are often very critical of the state of affairs of their country, but I think that we sometimes ignore the achievements of Nigeria and of Nigerians. For instance, according to the recent U.S. Census, something you all already know, we are proud that Nigerian Americans have the highest levels of education and the most successful ethnic group of all immigrant groups in the U.S., surpassing Asians and whites. Please give us a round of applause. As Dr. Irabo said, and as Dr. Yinka said, the Nigerian diaspora maintains a long friendship, interaction, and successes in the U.S. in so many fields such as the arts, academia, business, public administration, sports, film and entertainment, healthcare, trade and commerce. In fact, we all know that Bollywood is number one in the world in terms of the number of movies produced. Hollywood is number two in terms of movies produced. Nollywood, Nigeria, is number three in terms of movies produced. Uh, so I'm learning about the Nigerian standout people, right? I've, I've learned about Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Did I say it right? Absolutely. All right. Author. She's a world-renowned author, feminist, and activist. Her book entitled Americana was selected as one of the 10 best books of 2013 by the New York Times Review. But most of us will know her from pop culture because she appeared in one of Beyonce's hit songs, Flawless, I Woke Up Like This. Anybody? Awesome, awesome. Right. How about basketball? Um, basketball. Elijah, uh, Elijah one, right? Ola Hakeem Elijah one led the Houston Rockets to two NBA titles in the 1990s. And there was a gentleman by the name of Andre Iguodala, did yeah, I say it right? Yeah. All right, I'm Golden learning. State, Golden State Warriors. Golden State Warriors. He's been named NBA All-Defensive Team twice and won two NBA championships with the, uh, the Warriors. Now, how many of you saw the movie Concussion? How many of you have seen the movie Concussion? Three. 
for. Wow, you need to go see that movie because it was the story of Dr. Bennett Omalu, a Nigerian American physician, a forensic pathologist. And he was portrayed by no other person but Will Smith, who starred as Dr. Omalu. He was the one that illustrated the biographical spots, drama, thriller, film on the NFL fighting CTE brain degeneration suffered by professional football players. So. Um, these are just a few examples of the amazing works of Nigerians, and you have so much to be, we have so much to be proud of, the Nigerian community. Tonight, we would like to honor Nigerians, Nigerian organizations, and those who continue to support the Nigerian diaspora in various endeavors. I now call on Dr. Vice President of the Nigerian American Foundation, Dr. Patrick Ojo to help us with the awards presentation for tonight. I also like to call Dr. Yinka Teller to please come forward to make the award presentations to deserving Nigerians in the diaspora. The theme for tonight's award presentation is Pride of the As African Diaspora Awards. And somebody who makes Africa proud all the time, my brother, executive producer that contributes to African culture, the Miss Nigeria pageant show. If you have not come to that pageant show, please, every July, make sure you join us. My friend, my brother, you call him Murphy, I call him Mufu. Follow the show! in the arena of human life, honors and rewards fall to those who show their good qualities in action. That was said by Aristotle. The individuals and associations we're about to honor tonight have common threads that connect them all. They project a positive image for Nigeria and for Nigerians. They are selfless. They serve the community immeasurably whenever called upon. Gentlemen. Good evening, everyone. I, just before that award, we go to make a, a little presentation. Three different categories. Uh, the first one is going to go to. We have the, the NAP Youth of Promise Scholarship that was just given out recently. And we have three uh, contestants, or three people that emerge as winner. We go to recognize them this evening and give them their checks. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the first person we go to recognize uh, is uh, Mr. Akim Aziz. If you are here, please come in. Uh, we will have a scholarship for him for about five hundred dollars, and we have the check for him here. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very grateful for this award to Nigerian American Foundation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next person is uh, Miss Elizabeth Akambi, but she is not here of our lady. And we have uh, Miss Linda Lopez here to pick up the award for her. 
Chika Ojuku, if you are here, please come to the stage. Chika Ojuku. Elizabeth was at $500, and uh, Miss Chika Ojuku was $250. Thank you very much. We're going to move. Okay, we're going to move very fast, and we're going to go to the next category: is uh, appreciation of the executive for Nigeria American Foundation, and uh, in appreciation of. Uh, what uh, the president of the uh, Nigeria American Foundation has done. Uh, we wish to uh, recognize him and to thank him for everything that he has done for the past four years for Nigeria community. So in that regard, I'm going to call on uh, Chief Obadei to help me with this award. It's so good. Love is decide to present you with this. Uh, this is from Nigeria and American Foundation. It's a service and leadership award presented to Dr. Yinka Tela, president from 2014 to 2018. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. It's not, it's not finished. I uh, would like to call Chief Okbara and Dr. Odano to please join me up here. directors of Nigerian American Foundation, uh, we like to present Dr. Teller for his selfless effort for bringing Nigerian American Foundation to this situation today. We thank you. Thanks a lot. He says, yes, uh, we have leaders and we have leaders that make difference. He is a very tireless worker. He goes everywhere. He attends every program. He does not only attend the program, he walks the hall and makes sure he talks, he talks to everybody. So uh, we appreciate you. I don't know how we're going to replace you, but we will always be on our call. Thank you. Uh, Erase, the Board of Directors, Nigeria American Foundation, proudly presents a word of excellence to Dr. Oluyinka Tela, President, in recognition of your leadership, dedicated services, and invaluable contribution to the Nigerian people in South Florida, October 6, 
uh, Chief Obadeye, Dr. Uh, Dr. Alo Lono, and Chief Victor Opara. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to call on uh, Dr. Ikpe to join me on the stage in the presentation, in the next presentation. Dr. Ikpe, please. And uh, please, Chairman, Chairman Obadei, or Chief Obadei, don't sit yet. We have something for you. Uh, we're going to make this presentation to Chief Obadei as uh, the chairman, for the, being the chairman of the board of directors for now, for even more than four years now. Thank you. From Nigeria American Foundation, this is appreciation award presented to Chief Desiree, Chairman, Board of Directors, for your years of service, hard work, and service. Today is the day, October 6, 2018. Chief Desiree. Please remain on stage uh, because we're going to make we're going to make this presentation to the secretary for outstanding service to the Nigerian community and to now, and that is uh, to Dr. Ibenga Ipe for as the secretary for now. For yourself, uh, selfless service and leadership. Uh, the Nigerian American Foundation hereby presents Dr. Ibanga Ibe, the secretary. I mean, you've done a wonderful job. Thanks a lot. Thank you. always be in support of us. As far as I'm concerned, I've never seen any time he has not served in any executive in now. So we're going to present this award to the Financial Secretary, Alaji Ibrahim Latif. The Nigeria American Foundation Service Leadership Award presented to Latif Ibrahim, Financial Secretary, 2014 to 2018. Dated this day of October 6, 2018. Aladdin, this way. Okay, uh, we're going to call on these people, uh, Ms. Ch uh, Charlotte Watkins, the Assistant Secretary. Um, uh, Mr. Kevin King, Okoli King, the parliamentarian, and uh, Mr. R. Mayube, Abad Mayube, please will recognize you on this day too. And uh, the PRO, Tobechuku Nguahiri. <laughs> Well, 
lives remaining, Nigeria American Foundation Savings Leadership Award presented to Dr. Patrick Ojo, Vice President, 2014 to 2018. This day of October 6, 2018. Thank you. Listen, uh, I'm not the MC or the host, but this man is not a Nigerian. He's an Indian tonight. Can you give him a round of applause? No, no, this is very, this is discrimination. Look at your shoe. What do you think you're going to swim or something? Give him a round of applause in you, please. Uh, the last award uh, is going to be for our children uh, for the spelling bee contest. Uh, that happened this morning at the uh, uh, Miami Day College. So uh, we have uh, three contestants that emerge as winners. Uh, the first one, uh, we're going to recognize them and their parents. The first prize uh, goes to Miss Master. Rodney or uh, uh, if uh, the parents are here, please, will you come to the stage? Rodney or uh, and uh, Master, Master Rodney or uh, accompany your parents to the stage, please. God's plan. God's plan. I hope that sometimes I hold you back. I feel that sometimes I don't hold you To make it faster, the third winner is also from the same family. So, Master Bradley, Rodney on here and Bradley on here from the same family. The third winner is Bradley on here. Okay, the last but not the least, but it's the second winner, and we'd like to recognize the Oyewe family, and uh, that's Miss Inkechi Oyewe, Miss Mary's Dora. Can you come to the stage with your parents? Okay, um, we were just about to make the presentation to Murphy's Law Promotions. Uh, when that coup happened, uh, I didn't know that my executive was planning a coup. Uh, but we are really grateful for the sense of uh, commitment and, uh, you know, sacrifice that everyone has uh, really brought along on this journey. Now, we will now make the presentation to Murphy's Law Promotions. Chipovade is making that presentation. Murphy's Law Promotion is being honored for what it has done uh, for African culture in South Florida uh, with Miss Nigeria, uh, pageant and also the African Roots uh, pageant. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Mr. Murphy Follow is also a film director. I know you have at least one credit to, to your name. So uh, we really appreciate you for all you do, and that is why the Nigerian American Foundation is recognizing you with this Pride of the African Diaspora Award. Mr. Murphy Let's go. 
Because after the independence, his fight became about the leaders we celebrate today. But my dad was not a big fan of individual awards. So we never wanted to take something that was individual. He believed in community and the kids. So everything he did was for the kids. Even his tombstone, he wrote it that, Yet Liz Ebenezer Williams appeared to a lover, a man who strove to fight for his fellow men. So in that vein, as we honor with these kids right now, I want to challenge all of us, like this keynote speaker just said, I'd like to challenge all of us in the world where we use the end word to talk about each other. I want to challenge every African to think deep about the word Akata that we use. Because every child you see here, what we enjoy today in America, as American kids, is diced in their ancestors' blood. That's what we are here to celebrate today. So in that vein, I'm going to give the president of the youth to make a presentation to NAF. Good evening. Today, on behalf of the Ebenezer Williams Project, we would like to present to you an article written by Ebenezer Williams himself in 1958, and which is still very relevant today, 60 years later, because hate and race still lives on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, I can't do my love do everything when we my do everything when do He's our next honoree, Egbe Omo Odudua. Please come up and receive your award. Egbe Omo Odudua. Uh, they have presented a lot of scholarships uh, to students in Nigeria uh, for the past, I believe, over 26 years that they've been doing that every year, like for clockwork. So we really appreciate your service. And the president, Mr. Aruti Misalawu is coming up to receive this award on behalf of Edward Modijua. Nigeria, Yiti Bobo Wani, Koma Bodo Baje, Tobi Kosi Bobi Ronti Adilon, Ajo Leda Bile, Eje Kaso Boko Kapi Moshokan, The Vice President of Edward Modijua is joining us on the days, Mr. Motley for lunch. Our next honoree is Ijebu Descendants Association of South Florida. Ijebu Descendants Association of South Florida. And the president, Mrs. Abiola Abdukarim, is here uh, to receive that award on behalf of the association. And I can also see the secretary, Mr. Sunday Ushideko. After that is going to be unique African boutique. Representative of unique African boutique, please get ready to receive your award.
Pride of the African Diaspora Award given to Dr. Teller. Dr. Teller. Given to Rise and Shine Farmers. Rise and Shine, please come on up. This is your award, the last party night. Dr. Teller of Shela Nika Teller, please. Please welcome Senator Daphne Campbell and presenting the proclamation, Ms. Idris from the Office of Chairman Esteban Bobo Mami Day County. Dr. Teller. Dr. Teller. Proclamation for Miami Dade County. I think everybody laughed. I don't know why. We're gonna dance, and I don't know why they leave because I am waiting for that dance. So um, come forward, come forward. This is a proclamation from um, the Miami Dade County Office of the Mayor and Board of County Commissioners. I don't think none of them is here, but I'm gonna present this to you. Dr. Teller, and uh, to the organization for job well done. And uh, they declared today, not therefore, long thing, we're, gonna, we're not gonna read out the thing. Not therefore, be it resolved that I, Carlos A. Jimenez, Senator Daphne Campbell, replace him, Mayor of Miami-Dade County, Chairman Esteban Bovo, Jr., and the members of the Board of County Commissioners, on behalf of Miami-Dade County,